So good evening, everyone, and a, a warm welcome from a, a very chilly Johannesburg. I was hoping that it would be a, a, a nice uh, spring evening, but unfortunately, we or fortunately, we, we've got we've got rain and and the chill to to contend with. And and like I mentioned earlier, also lots of load shedding happening. I know that our our, our two panelists that have joined us uh, tonight are going to be uh, hit with load shedding at eight o'clock. So we we certainly are aiming to be to be done and dusted um, well well before then. Um, let me start by introducing myself. My name is Yvonne. Um, I'm an executive at HealthBridge and I look after the client experience experience teams. I've been part of the HealthBridge family for the past uh, 15 years and I've had the privilege of working with our, our two panelists um, who head up our, our product teams. I'll give them an opportunity to introduce themselves now. Sorry, looking for the unmute button. Uh, thanks, Yvonne. I'm Jared Crane. I'm the head of product in the clinical space. Uh, like Yvonne, it's plus minus 15 years at HealthBridge, um, over two stints. Um, yeah, and looking forward to, to sharing with you guys, you know, a little bit more about telehealth tonight. Evening, everybody. My name's Quinn and Governor. Um, like my fellow colleagues, we work together to, to really help health practices thrive, um, especially through COVID and after COVID. So looking forward to the demo and all the feedback. Cool, thanks guys. Um, maybe before we get started, just some, some housekeeping. Um, so the tonight's webinar, I'm gonna be spending no more than 10 or 15 minutes just sharing a, a presentation around um, telehealth and really just some trends and some best practice guidelines that um, we've we've put together as a as a team um, i'll then hand over to our, our product team to to demo our telehealth solution and then we've allowed which will also be about 10 or 15 minutes and then what we've allowed for is a good 10 15 minutes um faqs at the end um, we found in previous webinars that we've hosted that um, the attendees are always asking us um, to please allow for more time for um faqs um, this evening, uh, we, we have a mix of um, healthcare providers joining us, um, about 50% uh, being GPs, but then we also welcome a, a number of different allies. We've got psychologists, social workers, um, psychiatrists um, joining us this evening. So again, a warm welcome to, um, to, every, uh, to everyone. Um, you'll, you'll see in the, in the notice board that um, our marketing team had up front. We welcome questions throughout the, the webinar. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to just pop them in the, in the Q&A um, chat. Either myself, Jared or Quillen will pick up the questions and we'll either answer them um, during the, the demo or then during the, the FAQ um, session at the end of, of, of the webinar this, this evening. Um, you'll also notice that Laza had, um, being our, our digital brand manager, also um, had a notification saying that we there is a questionnaire at the end of the of the webinar which would really um, like if you could just take one or two minutes um, to answer that really just to give us feedback and then also very importantly if you have any questions after this evening's webinar please pop them through to us um, to the email address webinar at healthbridge.co.za I will remind everyone of what I've just said um, at the end of of the webinar this um, this. Uh, this evening and I think that's it from a logistics perspective and maybe the last thing I want to just mention is that tonight's webinar is recorded and um, Liza will be sharing that um, through with everyone uh, via email and you can expect to receive that um, uh, before the end of this, of this week. So without further ado, let me get started. Um, if you guys could just let me know if you can see my screen. Yep. Cool. As I mentioned, I'll be covering um, some trends that we've we've been um, noticing over the past couple of months. Um, some simple steps and best practice on, on how to implement telehealth out of practice. Um, the demo, which the product managers will cover, and then any FAQs. But maybe before I get started on, on the trends, um, telehealth and a definition. So this has evolved, um, certainly in South Africa, um, 
the start of, of, of COVID. It was referred to as, as telemedicine and then HPCSA has, has changed it now referring it to it as, as telehealth. And certainly what it includes is telemedicine, telepsychology, psychiatry, te telerehabilitation, and it really involves a remote consultation with patients um, using telephonic or virtual platforms um, in order to be able to consult with, uh, with patients. Importantly, and I'm sure by now we're all aware of this, that um, the HPCSA amended its guidelines in terms of um, what, uh, what they found to be appropriate from a telemedicine perspective, um, given um, the, COVID, um, the COVID pandemic. And really two, two important um, clauses were, were really amended, and that was around the application of telehealth during the COVID pandemic. Um, initially, they're encouraging that um, if it was going to be utilized, that it be utilized where a practitioner had an existing relationship um, with the exception of um, telepsychology and telepsychiatry. But since then, the clause has further been amended um, to say that provided that the consultations are done in the best um, clinical interest of the patient, then e even in the, in the event where um, a practitioner healthcare provider doesn't have an existing relationship, that that could still be um, an option for a healthcare provider. And then the other clause that um, was, was really amended is that practitioners may now charge a fee um, for services rendered through the telehealth um, platform. And we know that I'll cover the, the billing part of, of telehealth a little bit later, um, but certainly we also are aware of the, of the many different, differing fees that um, there are now available for telehealth um, consultations. In terms of the, of the trends, so globally telehealth um, has always been, and certainly in the States, um, something that healthcare providers have had in terms of their, of their basket of possibilities of consulting with, uh, with patients. Um, this came from a report from 2018, and even then, two years ago, they predicted that um, the use of telehealth uh, would be on, on the increase. In terms of the kinds of uses that telehealth um, was being utilized for, it was things like medication management and prescription renewal, uh, minor urgent care, um, care for the elderly, uh, chronic condition management, and pandemics. And I think little did they know uh, two years ago that we'd have a pandemic at our doorstep um, just two, two years later, or well, fast forward two years. But what, what, what do we see in South Africa? And maybe before sharing the trends around telehealth, what I wanted to share um, with, uh, with, with you guys this evening was really around what have we been seeing as um, from a volumes perspective um, that's been happening um, to certainly our clients and then extrapolating to, to the market and the impact that this has had on, on revenues for many, many healthcare providers in South Africa. So we've been monitoring um, claim volumes since the beginning of, of um, lockdown um, and that when, since really when the COVID pandemic started to become a reality in South Africa. We do monitor it on a per speciality and we've got a similar graph as what you see here by speciality. But for the purpose of this evening, I really just wanted to share that you know, we've seen, we've seen the, the dips in volumes. Fortunately, as we've moved into um, the different um, stages and lockdown has been um, relaxed, uh, it's become quite um, promising to see that it's, um, that it's certainly moved up to the 80, 84%. There's been a slight, slight um, drop again, but we do anticipate that that will kind of stabilize at the 85% mark. But very important is what is this, um, the impact that this has had in terms of, of revenue. So we've extrapolated um, our client data um, and used the CMS um, report to predict that there's probably been about an 8.2 billion um, loss in revenue in South Africa across um, pra practitioners, which is, which is really um, something that is, is quite seriously uh, quite serious for many many healthcare um, providers. Um, as I mentioned, we we predict looking at um, the data that the volumes will probably stabilize around the eighty five percent mark between August now September through to um, to December. 
And what this really means is that there's probably going to be an additional 3.4 billion um, loss, loss in revenue. Other trends that could impact further impact practice revenues, um, the impact of, of COVID peaking, um, hopefully, and we are seeing um, the, the number of, of patients um, on a daily basis that, um, that are, are being tested for positive um, COVID that is decreasing, but still patients are continuing to stay away from um, practices. Many high-risk patients will need to be proactively engaged, engaged with, and yet they are staying away from practices. For example, your chronic, um, chronic patients, doctors themselves and their staff continue to be um, affected. The impact that medical scheme membership um, contractions, so what we already are seeing is that many patients have started to, to buy down in terms of their, of their schemes and their plans and the options that they've chosen. Um, many job losses happening throughout South Africa will affect membership numbers. And then as COVID begins to ease, typically we see year-end um, seasonality as patients run out of benefits. Hopefully this year with many patients staying away um, from, um, from healthcare providers, we won't, this won't be um, as impactful. Not, not, not a pretty picture to, to say the least. In terms of the virtual consult, so in South Africa, what we see is, and when again we look at our data, is that it is on the increase, but the uptake is still, is still quite low. When we look at our claim volumes, um, we can see that about 3% of our claim volumes um, are, are, are actual telehealth um, consultations, but it's really positive to see that it's, a, a, it's an upward trend and more and more healthcare um, providers are, are adding telehealth consultations into the, the basket of type of consultations that they're offering their, their patients. Counseling, the highest um, for virtual consults um, followed by um, issuing of, of repeat scripts. In terms of the benefits of, of, of telehealth, certainly there are benefits for both the healthcare provider as well as the patient. Healthcare providers help recoup some of the, um, the, re the revenues where patients are avoiding coming to um, practices, um, less exposure to illness and infections for themselves and their, and their staff, um, the ability to work um, flexi hours, and certainly, as, as more patients become aware of the possibility of, of, of telehealth as an option, it does provide an ability for um, doctors to, to retain um, patients that would otherwise potentially go and seek a telehealth consultation at another, an, another um, healthcare provider. For patients, benefits include improved access, um, access to care where otherwise they, they may avoid coming through to a, a practice. Um, preventative care, ensuring that those that most need to come in for care are, are proactively still doing that. Um, convenience um, and slowing the spread, um, spread of infection. Um, I, I mean, a personal story on my side, I've got a, a, a little girl who, who suffers from um, uh, chronic conditions related to um, her, her lungs and it was absolutely amazing that her, her, um, her pulmonologist offered um, telehealth as an option um, for me and that I didn't have to, um, to, to bring her into to the hospital. A particular pulmonologist operates out of the hospital. So certainly I, I, I as a patient can attest to having benefited um, from, from the convenience of her doctor being able to offer um, telehealth. But Despite there being many benefits both to healthcare providers and patients of telehealth, it is still perceived to be quite, quite difficult or too difficult to, to implement at a practice by many um, healthcare, healthcare providers. Some of the challenges that, that are perceived is that there's just too many disconnected um, systems um, that need to be um, applied, considered in order to offer a, a good telehealth uh, experience to, to patients. The other thing is that just the level of comfort with technology, both for patients as well as, as healthcare providers. I mean, many of us now have had uh, Zoom chats and you saw right in the beginning of, of even our webinar, things like, can you hear me? I know there's many jokes that have been going around that, but just the, the, that level of comfort 
has also brought out brought about some resistance to to really looking at adopting telehealth. The other thing is concerns around privacy, um, with many data breaches um, taking place in other in other industries. It's it's no wonder that this is a concern, um, or no surprise that this is a concern for um, healthcare providers. Limited access to tech devices and connectivity. Will, will my patients be able to connect with me is often a question that, um, that our health, uh, our clients um, put forward, um, forward to us. Do they have this, uh, suitable tech devices? Do I myself need to um, invest in, a pro, in, in new tech in order to be able to help, um, offer um, tele, uh, telehealth, especially when you're looking to do video consultations? But the good thing is, is that we, we certainly believe that there are some simple steps um, as well as some best practice to, to implement. So I'm just going to take a few more minutes to, to share those uh, with you and then hand over to Jared and Quillen to demo. And really these steps are three. Um, first one, paying attention to choosing the right healthcare tech provider. Secondly, setting up your practice in order to offer telehealth. So it does take a little bit of of just time and consideration in order to to set to set yourself up to offer it um, uh, to offer telehealth, and lastly, just being able to keep your patients um, informed both that telehealth is an option for them, as well as any communications that need to be made to patients post the the telehealth consultation. So what we've done is prepared quick checklists for each of these um, these steps, which I'm going to run through now. The first checklist in terms of choosing the right um, health tech um, partner, and there are there are many, but we've just really lifted a few key uh, key points. Ensure that you you're choosing somebody that has an integrated online calendar with integrated patient communications. In other words, you can book those appointments. Um, you can easily be able you can easily be able to see the difference between a normal appointment versus a telehealth appointment, and then also ensure that the system you choose can fire off um, communications, whether it's via email or SMS, to to your patients, both for the appointment and for any follow up reminders. The other item to consider is to make sure that you're choosing something that is easy for you your staff and your, and your patients. We get lots of questions around, but how easy will it be for my patients to, to connect with me? It really, really is important that it's, it's easy for everybody. Needs to be seamless or ideally seamless and integrated with your clinical notes or electronic uh, medical record. Main reason around this is many healthcare providers that are offering telehealth are doing that from home. And often, you know, you don't have the patient um, files um, on hand. So the ability um, to be able to use an electronic medical um, record whilst you're at home to, to take down those clinical notes is really, really ideal and something we recommend um, looking out for. Um, and then the last one being ensure that it has integrated billing um, with up-to-date billing rates. I alluded to this in the beginning of, of my preso, which was that we know that there are many, many different um, rates being offered uh, for telehealth consultations, and it's really tough for healthcare providers to keep abreast of all these different rates. So choose, choose a partner that's, that's really doing this for you already. Maybe the last one is ensure that it's secure and that it's auditable, that should you need to be able to go back and see, well, how did I actually treat this patient, that it's easy to identify that it was via telehealth um, consult, uh, consultation. Step two, just a few points on this checklist in terms of setting up your practice to offer telehealth. So like with any, any change in any business, um, define your goals. So why is it that you're looking to offer telehealth? Every practice is different. Uh, some healthcare um, providers um, have told us that they've completely moved to telehealth. So people are, are on different um, spectrums of the, of the continuum to other doctors saying, well, this is something that I'm going to be look, I'm looking to offer patients after hours. So choose, define your goals specific to, to your practice. No one practice is the same. Get staff buy-in and support. It's not only you that's going to be involved in offering um, the telehealth, but really your staff in terms of how your staff communicate to patients um, that you're offering telehealth, any post 
communications that need to be made to patients um, after the consultation, it is important that, that, that you have the staff buy-in and support. Plan when in your diary you'll be offering telehealth. Again, um, no one practice is the same. Some um, healthcare providers choose to block out specific time in their diary when they're going to have telehealth appointments. Um, other practitioners prefer to um, you know, let their staff know that they can be slotted in at any, any point in time. Again, make sure that you've made that choice for your practice. And then lastly, it does take some, maybe refining is a big word, but tweaking to existing processes that you have already um, in your practice in order to incorporate telehealth and make it successful. Things like creating scripts for telehealth appointments, um, setting um, how to send patients any scripts or any further tests that need to be done post the telehealth consultation. And also very, very importantly, ensuring that you're billing immediately after the consultation because the patients aren't at your, at your practice, there is a, a risk of, 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 bad, of bad debt and we certainly don't, don't, wanna, don't wanna have that. In terms of the checklist of informing patients, creating communications for all your channels, SMSs, um, email, again, really to keep your patients informed that this is an option that you're offering. Choosing specific patients um, to offer telehealth health to patients that it's more appropriate and beneficial for, for example, um, your, your chronic uh, patients or patients that need to come back um, for, for repeat scripts. It is important to be able to just um, have an outreach um, communication mechanism for those patients. And then like I've mentioned, market the benefits of telehealth um, to, to your patients. And that's it from, from my side. I'm going to hand over to, uh, I'm going to stop sharing and hand over to our product team um, to demo our, our telehealth offering. Cool. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, just a, a slight warning that my wife is putting two kids to sleep in the background. So if you hear screaming, that's completely normal. Don't worry. Um, so just in terms of the demo, I'm going to start with uh, my MPS, our cloud-based um, PMA. Uh, that will, I'll show you how to check in patients, how to manage the calendar, um, really how easy it is and speak to the points that Yvonne has, has just touched on. Then I'll hop over into our HealthBridge clinical product. That'll be, that's the product that um, we've launched for GPs and specialists. And then Quillen will come on board and, and wrap it up um, again from the MyMPS perspective. Let me quickly share screen and you should see, cool. Can you see my screen changing between tabs here? Yvonne? On. Cool, yep. thanks. Thanks, Quillen. Um, okay, great. So, so as I said, I'm gonna start on the, on the My MPS side. I'm not gonna go through obviously um, the whole system. I'm, I'm just gonna speak specifically to the telehealth side of things. What's really important from uh, the admin side and from the doctor's side is you can tell e quickly and easily, you know, what are the appointments for the day? Which ones are telehealth? Is it a video? Is it a phone call? How long have patients been waiting? And it's, it's just really a, an easy interface. I think we've learned quite a bit from, from looking at, you know, global trends, some of the, the hiccups in the process with telehealth that we've heard, you know, doctors saying, I connect and the patient's not there and then I disconnect and then I reconnect and the patient's not there. And well, then the patient came and I wasn't available at the time. So we've taken these all in and I'll, I'll show you how we've, how we've managed to address these. So quite simply, we can see the, the calendar here. We can see that um, Mr. Smith had an appointment at 6.30. We got Lawrence Jones, we got Jane McRitchie. This is a, a calendar entry system, very much like you'd be used to on Outlook or Gmail. Simply click on the calendar. You can type a patient in, um, let's just spell it correctly, find the patient. Um, and then from here, you can, you can select which uh, provide in the practice if there's multiple. And importantly, there's a visit type. So we can change the, the visit type from a regular consultation, uh, the type of things you typically see, whether it's uh, medical insurance or regular consultation. And then now there's a, a telephonic and a video option. So it's really easy to do and simple to create, what happens in the background from there is the patient will receive an SMS and say, you know, if it's a telehealth consultation, you have your appointment with uh, Dr. Harris here at 6 p.m., simply click on the link and you'll be able to connect. So some of the big differences here, 
an important things to note is that for a patient, they'll get the SMS and they simply click on the link. There's no installing apps or registering. Um, and once they do click on the link, it creates a secure connection. They'll agree to terms and conditions and it'll connect to a, a waiting room for the, for the doctor to then connect to and join with them. There's, from a doctor's perspective, they'll be able to see, here's my waiting room. I got Andre Smith 41 minutes ago for a telephone consult, uh, Lawrence Jones, video consult. So it's really a digital waiting room. It's the equivalent of your waiting room. Um, but now you'll be able to see who, you know, it's important that you're not sitting there waiting for Lawrence Jones to walk through the door, but you know Lawrence Jones by the little icon here is a video consult. And you can simply, you'll, you'll see the color of the, of the consultation change. So if Lawrence Jones connects, this will go to green. You simply click on it and it opens that secure connection with the patient and you can join join the consultation. Here it already says the patient has not yet joined the consultation. In terms of the billing step after this, very quick and easy to do. You check the patient out, you generate the invoice, it'll have the correct codes and pricing based on the type of consultation. Um, because it is a cloud-based system, you don't have to manage the, the prices yourself. We take care of that for you. As things change, and they have been changing very frequently for the different schemes, uh, we manage that and, and the system reflects accurately. So from our side, I can see that Jane McRitchie, uh, to see Dr. Bridge has, is a, has arrived. I can see it's turned green. Um, I'm not gonna launch it from, from here. I'm now gonna step into the, the EMR or the clinical side, the Healthbridge clinical product that is specific to, to GPs and, and certain specialists um, and take you through that flow. I know there is a, an audience of, of um, mixed specialities. Uh, we will cover the, the allied health um, afterwards. So the one thing Yvonne mentioned is that, that seamless integration between admin, patient, and, and the provider. It's really important that the patient knows when to arrive, so that's the SMS. It's got to be simple. They can just click on the link. Um, it, it doesn't use a lot of bandwidth. They can open it up on their phone or any internet connected device and connect to the doctor. For the doctor, they can see when the, the patient has arrived. It's integrated with the front desk, so I can see Jane McRitchie's next. I got a message, patient suspects, suspects they have COVID, it's phoned three times today, so that comes from my admin person. That's the seamless connection. I'll then open that, that clinical record. I'm not gonna go through everything, but it's, you know, as a provider, I can see, okay, Jane McRitchie enjoys hiking, they're asthmatic, they're on Ventolin. Uh, we've discontinued melatonin. If there's any surgical information that's relevant, they had uh, the appendix removed, it's not really. They're an ex-smoker and they socially drink. So it's, it's, this is the equivalent of the yellow file digitized. And it's really just easy for you to see everything before connecting to that patient, everything you need to see. So we can scroll down and we know that uh, Jane, or she prefers to be called Janie, was here on the 7th of August, upper respiratory infection, we gave Augmentin. Um, she was here on the 29th, the 31st. It's obviously our dummy test patient, so a little bit of a hypochondriac. And I, I can just understand everything I need to about that patient. So it's that seamless integration again. And then I can click here and start a telehealth consult. It, there's no switching between different systems and different apps and having to connect on your phone with WhatsApp. Um, and then the patient sees your private number or they haven't installed Zoom or, or that type of thing. It's, it's an all-in-one system. You click to start the consultation. Do you want to mute on Zoom, please, Yvonne? <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to hear me twice. One sec, Jared. Cool, no worries. Cool, thank you. Um, let me turn to, are you mute? Uh, I haven't muted myself. Okay, you might get a little bit of feedback. But I can now see the patient here. Um, because I'm on Zoom, I've, I've only got one camera working. Um, hello, Yvonne, how are you? She can then say, oh, you, you know, go for it. <laughs> Sorry, I just realized you got to unmute, uh, unmute on Zoom and mute on this. Okay. There we go. Guys. Now we can hear you. Okay, cool. Not um, doing too could, well, Dr. Jared. I believe you suspect you have COVID. Is that correct? Unfortunately so. So, so at, at this point, I would go through the consultation flow. Um, we've got, you know, I can make, make the screen bigger if I need to, uh, you know, see a bit more clearly. I can reduce it. I can minimize it. I'll click on the visit type as, as COVID. 
and from here I can ask Yvonne the specific sorry or Jane the specific questions you know um, do you have a fever you'll say yes <laughs> um, so we'll throw it no and simply click on this and generate the clinical record as we go um, so what's it with the advantage of, of, of using it this way Again, it's just all in one clinical record. You can simply click yes, yes, yes. You have the patient on the screen. Um, you can engage with them. You can select one of your templates or put in IC10 code. We can say it's just your asthma, uh, nothing to worry about, Jane. I'm gonna give you a antibiotic. It'll pull up my favorite antibiotics. Um, let's give you some, uh, let's go with Zithromax. It's got my favorite dosages there. And I can just go through the, the typical clinical flow that, um, that we're all familiar with. Um, this is all customizable. So if you don't want to use a template, do want to use a template, type, click, whatever it is. As we go through this consultation, it completes all the clinical recorded notes for you. It's got the correct procedure lines and, and pricing for the telehealth. And I can say, thank you, Vaughn. I'll email you your sick notes. I'll email you your script straight from the system. And have a good day. I'm gonna hang you up there and kill that. So uh, uh, before I hand over to, to Quellen, it's, it's really, I think the, things are, the, the thing I wanna stress is, you know, from a patient's perspective, it's an SMS they get, they get a reminder SMS. It's just clicking on a link, creates a secure connection to the doctor um, or the provider. What's really important is that you don't sit waiting. Is the patient there, not there, opening, closing, switching between it. Suddenly the patient arrives when you're with another patient. Um, it's got to have that seamless integration with the patient, the admin, and yourself. And on that note, I'll stop. So we do have time for questions. Q, over to you. Thanks, Jay. Let me just share my screen. So I have a few windows open. Oh, there we go. Cool. We Let me know when you can see it. Yep, all good. Yep, all good. Okay. So holding off um, what Yvonne uh, introduced in terms of telehealth um, and Jade in terms of the flow for, for, for the GP, uh, the seamlessness um, at the center, I think it, it all starts on, on this system as Jared showed you. Um, for our allied uh, colleagues that are on the call, uh, we're going to run through basically a similar flow, um, but the difference is, you know, something lighter, something a little bit simpler um, that uh, I think we have a lot of uh, existing clients. If you're familiar with MPS, you can see how to, to utilize this already um, as of today. So what we have here is three uh, appointments, no, no different to, to what Jared has. Um, we have a waiting room. Um, key things about the, the icons here is this is a video appointment uh, for Health Beach Demo. There's another video for, for Ruby De Silva, and there's another telephonic for, 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 for Alicia. Um, very important to know in terms of a provider is that there's 34 minutes ago when I saw this patient, 19 minutes ago, and four minutes ago in terms of when, when last I've seen this patient. Um, the typical things that we do get um, for our current users is, you know, a client just um, is in a, a bit of an emergency and he wants to come see me now. He's already at my practice and I am working from home. So we do have, you know, the walking patient, um, just use myself, Quillen, and uh, Quillen wants to be uh, a telephone because I'm working from, from home. Um, he wants to see, for this instance, the dietitian um, and basically he wants to run his meal plan looking for the summer body uh, that's coming up after this cold September. So check Quillen in. Um, in here, so I just forgot to click on the video consult. Just save this again. Okay, okay, so I've just arrived. Here's Quillen. Um, the provider can see him. You can click on this, this will seamlessly launch into, into the window. As Jared mentioned, no downloading. Um, obviously my camera is on this side, so I can't see the camera, but you can join the consult. Um, you can also leave a message. Um, so I am ready and waiting. Um, if you're early, um, but in most instances, we've seen that 
doctors prefer or providers prefer to understand that when the client's there, then I connect, which is this little green icon here. And when it goes green, that's when I can connect with the patients. Close this. Um, close this piece. Um, another use case that we get uh, for, for the Allied is, okay, here's a simple solution. Uh, try to just demo the, the GP, uh, the full EMR. Here's something that's a little bit light um, that you want to touch on for, uh, for Quillen using the general medical history, um, general progress notes. Um, there's a body chart, um, and I do believe that they have some speech therapists and physios in the audience. Um, and ultimately, there is no notes on Quillen because he's a new patient. If I want to see Rudy's file, um, and click on his notes, I can see there's a full history of, of Rudy. Rudy's here to see the dietitian. I've already started some of my assessment um, with Rudy. So here's basically um, the note on Rudy. Um, and for test purposes, this basically tells you um, that I can complete my SOAP notes. It's very generic. Um, but the key here is to really capture your notes, have digital um, telehealth all in one, uh, and allowing you to engage with that client as well as bills. So uh, for example, for billing, um, when you check out, just close this, we'll check really out. It will, it will prompt you to, to invoice if you have an invoice already. Um, Rudy's here, he's 34 years old, his discovery, um, it's linked to this appointment. Um, if I want to use a billing template, um, I can. Uh, he came in for a one to 10 individual family psychologist session. Um, here's my new template. I'm happy with this consult and I will either submit it to the medical aid or save it for later um, for the admin or practice manager to submit. Um, so I'll just do that. And Rudy is out. We will close Helen? the screen. Yes. Helen, maybe just before you, you carry on, because we've got a we've got a billing related question and you're on billing. Um, sure. how does it work? Um, cash, credit card, co-payment, um, etc. Uh, that's the one, and I think there's two parts to the question. The other part being, uh, do I do a take on with a new patient? Okay, so from what I'm hearing, how does how do we do billing in terms of how does a client pay um, for a teleconsult? Is that, is that the question? Yeah, how does billing work? Cash, so if you are billing for cash, a credit card or a co-payment, I think just maybe... Um, okay, okay, cool, I'll touch on that. Okay. Yeah. So that's, so that's it's, it leads to the screen. Um, so we just did Rudy, he's a medical aid account. Um, so if Rudy was a cash, cash account, it'd be a, a cash practice, um, but of course he's medical aid. Um, and this automatically gets sent to the medical aid according to the telehealth rate from what we just used. If it's a cash patient, you have a few options in terms of cash, whether you set your own private rate or you choose to have it at the discovery or one of the other rates um, that you can do. In terms of how a patient captures a, a payment, what typically happens is that you, um, so you generate or email the statement to a client this is my cash. I haven't saved this, sorry. Um, one second. Um, typically what happens is you send the statement, there's your banking details, um, and this will get emailed to Rudy, and Rudy can pay either by EFT. We do have SnapScan that's integrated, so it's digital as well. Or if he's really at already at the practice, your front desk is capturing a payment. It's a payment type, it either it's cash or credit card. Payment reference um, is Rudy in this instance, and the total amount that I collected for this telia was, let's just make it 232 Rand, and it's linked to my one invoice that I had today, um, and basically you save that and you allocate that amount to the payment. Okay, so that's, hopefully that covers payment and patient payment, who does it, whether you're the admin or if you're the provider, cash or medical aid from a payment perspective. Thanks, Quillen. Cool. There was another question on... Um, so maybe the one thing, um, if, uh, it's do I do, a t do I do a take on with a new patient? I'm not following it 100%, but I mean, the one thing I can say is that with as you book appointments in the online calendar, it does trigger a benefit check through to the medical aid to check if the patient um, has benefits, whether it's a new or an existing 
um, an existing patient. If I've misunderstood the question, maybe um, uh, Jackie, if you can just clarify a little bit and we'll do our best then to, to answer the, the second part if, if it hasn't been answered yet. Yeah, so I think touching on probably just the appointment, if one mentions the benefit check, what's key is when you make a booking, um, our system verifies if this patient has funds or not for a consult. Um, and obviously, of course, this is our, our test site, so we haven't loaded actual scheme data on here, but your benefit check status will show, um, and you either get a green, red, or orange on, on this instance, a gray on the right, to know that that client is covered for that appointment. Um, so that's covering you both for understanding how to manage the client in terms of payment um, with, with, with your practice. If I'm not mistaken, in terms of what Jackie might have been asking is, you know, can I see a new patient on telehealth according to the rules? I don't know if it's, if it's that, if it's that, um, if it's that question or not, please. I think we can move on and... Okay, cool. Last piece of, you know, Yvonne mentioned the third step is how do you communicate that you have this amazing function? Um, we do have emails and confirmation that's automatic, that gets sent. Um, we have it at two hours, one day, two days. So if you do set up these tele uh, um, telehealth appointments, what we're seeing what best is, you know, if you do have a practice administrator or you block out um, time in, in your day um, for a specific appointment, um, we'd like to block that out and say, please book all my telehealth according to 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Um, and in that, in that instance, it really works in terms of managing telehealth bookings. We send those uh, reminders to those clients. Jared mentioned it, that it's a simple click in an email or SMS or both. Um, and it reminds the client two hours, it's five minutes, five to 10 minutes before the actual appointment. No downloading, click on the link um, and you get connected as, as we mentioned. Another, another great way to communicate to patients is the bulk communications. Um, so if you'd like to you know, send a message regarding um, your telehealth, you've just uh, launched it at your practice, you want to engage with your clients, that you have this amazing feature, this is a way that you can email or SMS or both, attach maybe a one pager about your, your practice and the change in COVID, and that you'll be introducing telehealth. Um, and if they're interested, please um, contact the practice, make a booking, and we will facilitate everything as the process mm -hmm. that we just showed you. So that is a great way of communicating this great feature. Yeah, I think that's it from, from my side, Lee. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Craig. And yeah, the, the few questions have come, have come through. Um, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the lovely job of posing the questions to, to, the, two, to the two of you. Um, uh, so, uh, Dr. Dr. Reed, uh, is the integration with regards to telehealth, templates, et cetera, part of the HealthBridge package? Or do you have to buy additional packages? Maybe, Jared, do you want to take that one? Sure. So the as, as part of the MyMPS um, package, so I know we we might have confused a few people by, by jumping around a bit. So the MyMPS is, is our web-based uh, or cloud-based uh, admin system. And that is common functionality across all the different specialities. Um, and from there, you can you can bolt on the, the telehealth offering. Um, and then over and above that, if you want to use the, the, the light clinical notes, my MPS, you can. If you want to use the more comprehensive EMR notes, if um, depending on your speciality, then that's also available. Um, but the, the, the platform that everything lives off is um, my MPS, the, the, the cloud-based PMO. Cool. Um, and I think same, um, same, same doctor asking currently, it's a, it's a client of ours using, um, they're using Eminence and Healthbridge, does it work the same way? So maybe I can, I can answer that. Um, so if you're using um, Eminence, that means that you're using um, Eminence as your, as your PMA and Healthbridge as, as a switch. So at the moment, um, what we're dem demoing tonight is off our um, cloud-based um, uh, PMA. So at this stage, it, it, it's not available to clients where we are um, just, just a, switching, a switching partner. Maybe it's something you can, um, you can reach out to, to the PMA, Eminence PMA partner, and they may well have, um, have a, similar, a similar offering. 
on their front end um, application. Um, next question. Um, let me just go through here. Uh, Quellen, I think for you, one of our clients, um, a nurse client, uh, I think more a, a, a suggestion and a request really to say that it is in such a way that my MPS can um, have correct titles. Uh, I'm a professor nurse and it addresses me as a doctor and it confuses clients. Kindly um, look into this. Maybe something you can add to your roadmap or if you want to answer if it is already on the, on the roadmap. Uh, yes, it is. Um, so we'll just have a look as to why. Um, I'm sure it's there. I just need to double check the practice and then get back to them. But it is on, it should, it should be in. Okay. Okay, cool. We've got we've got um, the practice um, the practice name, um, so we'll we'll then reach out to you after after the webinar. Um, let me see if now I've got the right way to phrase this question. This it is a new patient. Do do I do a take on? Does the patient fill in a form with all the details, medical aids, um, etc.? So for a new patient, I guess the question is: Is there a digital take on for um, for that um, patient? Uh, I can take a day. Um, so uh, yes, it is. It is in our roadmap. Um, we showed you the, the reason for visit and the patient file. We do have a, another function where you just ask for the membership number um, and we'll be able to check across all the schemes, um, that client and that client file. And basically those client details are, are filled in to create that account. Um, the next part of that is obviously sharing those details with the patient to complete or verify um, and obviously asking them the reason for visit. For, for my example that I showed, I say I wanted to come in for a meal plan. I was new, I was a walk-in. It, it wouldn't have worked for me because I was a walk-in, but in a scheduled booking, making appointment, can the patient see it? So it is on our roadmap and you'll be able to, to, to get that uh, in the near future. So, so Q, uh, just for my understanding, you were saying medical aid number, so they can put in the medical aid number and then it checks on our side if their patient's been there before uh, or been to Correct. one of our practices before? Okay. Correct. Correct. So yeah, we have the Helpbridge community. Um, so if, if that patient has visited any of our practices across, across the country, we, we check that membership number. It has been created. It does then find it. It just obviously yeah. finds Yvonne's name. And the rest of the, the FICA details would have to be confirmed by the patient, but it saves the time, especially for booking an emergency um, perspective. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, another question, um, well, it's, it's again two parts to the question. Um, we touched on it, but maybe we can elaborate. How do my patients connect? And then uh, once they connect, does the way they connect change? Um, from if they come back for uh, another appointment. Yeah, so, so each, each appointment has a unique link, so it doesn't reuse the same, same link to, to generate a, a meeting um, for security purposes. The, so a patient will simply click on that link that we send to them as part of the reminder for the consultation. So just as Quilla mentioned just before, they'll get, they'll get a message, um, email, SMS, they click on that link. Um, it uh, confirms terms and conditions from the patient's perspective. It'll then open on their phone, just like a WhatsApp call uh, would open on the phone. The only difference is it is secure. It's only between the doctor and the patient and no one else can, can access it. Okay. Um, we've got another question around um, how, and probably from one of our, our psychologists, um, the webinar, how many um, patients can join at, at any given time? I can maybe take that one. Um, for now, the current solution is a one-to-one -one, um, relationship, meaning um, provider and, and patient. Um, you know, depending on how telehealth, as Yvonne has showed you, and the trends and, and the trajectory of it, we, we have in our, in, our, in our backlog for, you know, growing it to a group call. Um, but as, as it stands, it is a two participants in a call. It's encrypted, it's safe. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Um, maybe Jared, one for you. Uh, does cloud-based EMR require servers at the practice? No, no, no servers required. 
uh, it is 100% pure cloud-based, no installation. So you run it straight from your uh, from your browser. Um, for the technically inclined, we use Microsoft Azure Cloud Service. So it's a, it's a very popular, well-recognized, big secure server. Um, and yeah, so it's purely cloud-based. Um, next question, will telehealth make suggestions of possible treatment for a particular diagnosis? Hmm. <laughs> well, since I'm talking already, <laughs> no. Uh, no. Um, so we we currently don't do any decision support um, or, or any suggestions along, along those terms. Um, so it won't suggest a, an RCV10 code um, or a particular diagnosis. We have made the searching for a, a diagnosis simple and easy. And if there's an existing one for that patient, we'll present it for quick selection. Uh, but no, we don't, we don't do any, anything, you know, we're not clinicians at the, at the end mm -hmm. of the day. So uh, no, it doesn't do that. And thanks for the comment as well. Yes, thank you. Um, let's see if I've got another, we've got another question. Uh, how much data will be needed for a, if I'm doing a video consultation, if I'm using my, my cell phone, I guess both from a, a patient and a, and a healthcare provider's perspective. Take that one. Quentin, you. Um, I think, uh, look, it's a, it's a good question. Um, we, you know, we strongly recommend having a wired or Wi-Fi connection, that, you know, for optimized uh, viewing to make it as, as seamless as possible. We don't want the breaks between signal dropping and, um, you know, bad network. So we really prefer to have a wider Wi-Fi connection. In terms of how much, it depends on the quality of the device. So for example, you know, my laptop, HD, HD camera, it will resonate into, you know, 24 frames per second, which will really eat up some of the data if I put it on the really high quality. Um, but to, to give an example, for a 10 minute consult, you would, on the full, full, um, Full HD um, sets up even 4K streaming. You're looking at 250 megs for for, for a 10 minute consult. You know, if you tone it down, scale it down, um, you know that 10 minutes will, will, can last you know, for 25 megs. It just depends on the quality of the device. Um, but yeah, we highly recommend you know wired or Wi-Fi just so that is consistent. But that should answer. Cool. Um, I'll answer, there's one that's come through. Thanks, Jared, for appointing me to, to answer the consent one. So once an appointment is made, um, is that consent um, obtained, especially for, um, for children? So we've, we've obviously seeked um, legal advice around, um, around telehealth. So the consent at the moment um, happens, as Jared mentioned before. So let me talk to the, the video consult. Um, before a patient can connect to a video consult, they basically, uh, and they enter that, that virtual um, consult room, they, they consent to that telehealth consultation. So that's one way we're obtaining um, um, consent. Um, the advice we were given around um, telehealth is that um, certainly as long as a, a healthcare provider is keeping the pa keeps the patient informed and at the start of that consultation says the right says the things like do you consent to having a telehealth consultation and they keep a record of that certainly the, that's the guidance that we've been given that that should um, should be sufficient the the rules are all the regulations are, are are changing on a daily basis and something that we are, well, I've been working with the product team is well, you know, should we even have consent right up front, as as you've rightfully asked, you know, with the telephone um, booking? So it's something that we we've also put on our on our roadmap. Um, you know, should telehealth continue to 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 increase in terms of a, a a a tool to use to consult with patients, and it becomes an absolute requirement, that will be something we will have. But the guidance we've been given is make sure that the healthcare provider makes it really clear up front. Um, that that patient says, you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm happy to have this, this consultation, and that that should be sufficient. That it's kept in your in your file. Um, let me just see if there's um, other other questions. Uh, I think we've got got a few minutes for a few more. Um, can I record my session? 
Um, I can take it one. Not at the moment. Um, it is something that we are considering, uh, depending on the, on the rules and regulations. You know, we follow strict guidelines according to HPCSA. Uh, we do get those medical legal questions. You know, there's proof. I had the appointment. It's recorded. Can I send it to you? Uh, and obviously, we as HealthBridge are seeking you know the best possible um, protocols for for our providers, and we align to HPCSA. And if that if that changes, and should that be a requirement, we do have it on that roadmap. We'll gladly switch that on uh, from a recording perspective um, as, as the second phase to our telehealth solution. Yeah, I, I mean, as Quillen says, this this is a turning on thing. We we actually have it, but there's a heavy implication with cost in terms of now storing all of these uh, video and voice files. So unless it becomes really necessary, as Quillen says, and we, we're pretty strict with the guidelines, then we can definitely do it. So yeah. just a warning, if I go complete uh, load shedding and yes. 180 uh, um, <laughs> And I, I don't think we've got um, any, I don't see any more questions coming through. I just wanna make sure I've looked in the Q and A and in the chat. Um, just have um, uh, one more. Um, if doing telehealth, if doing telehealth on Discovery patients, Health Connect, does it integrate with HealthBridge, or do we have to to send a separate invoice on HealthBridge, or does Health Connect or Discovery bill automatically um, if the practice is using HealthBridge for their claiming? Do That's a good question. I think there has been. A lot of movement in the industry um, yep. in terms of schemes, funding, rules, um, you know, just the change in telemedicine to telehealth was, I mean, was a big shift. So in terms of discovery and, and, and connect, we, we um, so how can I put this discovery? Currently, you, you capture your, your clinical encounter um, and you submit that clinical encounter to, towards the scheme. In terms of a billing and a transaction for that date, that it can happen across any PMA, uh, herd eminence, you know, health bridge. We showed you showed you how to do it according to that telehealth rate. And for that patient with that membership number, both on Health Connect from a clinical encounter, mixed with what I showed you on MPS, the billing instruction. That is how that those two are married, and that's automatically done, and you will be reimbursed accordingly as a provider to that patient. So. We, we have access to, to Health Connect from, from our platforms, both Jared's um, EMR has, has, has access to Health Connect as well as, you know, MPS. And a few sprints from now, you can click on that button and you can access that, that client and search for that client and capture a clinical account. But the billing instruction happens purely on an MPS level. So till now, Health Connect doesn't do, doesn't, you cannot bill with that system for discovery. So long story, you unfortunately have to use both, um, both systems for now. Mm. Um, I, I see Liza is also nudging me nicely. You guys living in the north, I'm sure load shedding is about to 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 to, to come your way. Um, so Liza's put the the link to the survey, which I mentioned up front. Um, that we'd really appreciate if you could just take a few minutes. It's in the um, uh, the the Zoom um, chat chat section, um, if you could click on it and complete that. Um, as I mentioned up front, if you've got any any other questions, please, please send them through to us, webinar at healthbridge.co.za. We did record this evening. We will be sharing um, the presentation. Um, and yeah, again, thank you for the time um, that you spent with us um, this evening. We, we absolutely enjoy sharing you know, any, any, any guidance or advice that we have as well as, a, as, as, as our demo. Um, so yeah, and I know I speak for myself and, and for the rest of the team, we, we always enjoy these opportunities. Um, so yeah, from my side, um, thank you and um, good evening. Thank you, good everyone. Thanks. Before the power Thanks. goes out, you get to say, get to wave goodbye. <laughs> so they can see cool. us. Thanks guys. Thanks everyone. Cool. Cheers. Good evening. Cheers. Bye.